The final sitting fortnight in Parliament before the winter break got underway today. The government wants the Upper House to pass its major housing bill, as well as legislation for a referendum on The Voice. But the most heated moments today were about events in the past. First in the Senate, where the opposition accused Finance Minister Katie Gallagher of misleading Parliament in 2021 over what she knew ahead of the first public airing of the Brittany Higgins story. I take my responsibilities to this place as a senator very seriously and I have always conducted myself with the highest levels of integrity. And I always will. I did not mislead the Senate. Prior to the 15th of February 2021, did you receive a copy of Ms Higgins' project interview, Order. the transcript of that interview or any part of it? How did you receive it and from whom? What you're asking me to do is to breach the confidence of a... Well, Order. Let's, let's be clear. Let's be clear about what you're asking me to do here is to disclose information that was given to me and asked to be kept by me in confidence. Meanwhile in the House, former Prime Minister Scott Morrison responded to claims made over the weekend that he had misled Parliament regarding conversations with Fiona Brown, a member of his office, about Brittany Higgins's claim that her job had been threatened when she made the original assault allegations. While my recollection differed to that of Ms Brown, Given that there has now been more than two years that have passed, given the considerable activity of that week and the presence of Ms Brown's contemporaneous note, while I believe my response to be accurate at the time, I cannot obviously fully discount that her, of the, her recollection of those events now were the more accurate. Laura Tingle is 7.30's chief political correspondent. Laura, I noticed uh, Senator Hanson Young today referred to the politicking of the last few days as being revolting, is the word she used. Why was it back today in such force? Well, I think what Senator Hanson Young was uh, reflecting, Sarah, was uh, the sense that this issue has moved beyond Bruce Lehrman and, uh, and Brittany Higgins. It's just pure politics. And I think uh, you are seeing across the uh, crossbench in both the House and the Senate a real horror, as there is in a lot of uh, sectors of the community, about the impact of this story on the future of any woman coming forward to uh, claim that she's been assaulted, given the way the story has developed over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the, way, the reason the story has got really heated in Parliament is uh, a fairly base, basic uh, political one, on the one hand, you've got um, Senator Linda Reynolds, who was um, Brittany Higgins' boss and Bruce Lehrman's boss at the time of this alleged assault, uh, who clearly suffered terribly. We saw her suffering terribly under questioning about this. Um, I think it's really important to remember that at the time she kept saying, I couldn't say very much because I, you know, we wanted to give agency to Brittany, that it was up to her to report this. Now, she feels very aggrieved about the way she was portrayed in all of that. Um, but on top of that, there is clearly a sense within the coalition that for the first time since the election last year, there is a, the, there is a sense of a political scalp in the wind. And that's a very high profile scalp. And that's the finance minister and minister for women, Katie Gallagher. Now, the issue of whether Katie Gallagher uh, misled the Senate revolves around her saying no one knew about this in, uh, in June 2021. Now, uh, what Katie Gallagher has said to the Senate today is, look, um, the conversation I had and the context of that uh, remark was that um, I, was being I was talking about whether Labor had been involved or had known about uh, or become involved in, in this issue becoming public, and that was certainly not the case. Yes, I received some briefing on that, but Brackets a bit like Linda Reynolds, I was asked to keep it private and I did. So it hinges on, um, in Katie Gallagher's mind, the, the idea that you know, Labor did not have a role in making this allegation public, i.e. it was not a, a political attack, that it was Brittany Higgins who put this forward. And I think if you think about the underlying story that's sort of implied in the last couple of weeks here, Sarah, it is that... Uh, this was a, basically a Labor political attack in which Brittany Higgins played a part 
and that at the other end of this, she received a very big payout, which uh, Katie Gallagher was de deliberately and uh, directly involved in, which she is also flatly denied, and um, the evidence doesn't suggest that she was involved. So it's pretty murky. Um, uh, at the same time, just to go to the, the question as to whether or not anybody um, achieved anything with the allegation of whether Katie Gallagher did, in fact, mislead the Senate. As, as I understand it, the question is about what she did, but also the time of her knowledge, the time frame of her knowledge. Now, were, was the opposition successful in getting her to concede anything or put anything new on the record today? Well, we saw in that grab that she was sort of uh, seemed to be obfuscating about whether she had that transcript. Um, and she hasn't uh, directly addressed, I think, um, or, you know, there is that vulnerability about her not actually addressing the fact that she said, look, nobody knew anything, when clearly she's essentially saying she did. But she's saying nobody knew anything in the sense of making it into a public allegation or running a public campaign. Now, I've got to say, it's become unfortunately quite common for people to mislead the parliament. Mm. Um, John Howard uh, did so rather conspicuously back back in the day by saying that he hadn't had a meeting with um, a particular lobbyist and it turned out that he had, but he survived. The test, uh, the, the bar has dropped a fair bit. So it, it goes to the substance of whether somebody appears to have, you know, really not just in the wording but in, in the, the context misled the Senate. And I don't know that they've made that point, but they've certainly done her some damage. Now, what about Scott Morrison? We saw him there standing up uh, quite quickly in question time today. How many questions are there still revolving around his actions at the time? Well, he's not actually saying he did and he's not saying mm. he didn't. He said uh, he just can't quite remember. Um, now, uh, I think the bottom line is we, we will never know at this point. Uh, we haven't seen the Gaitchens report. And, of course, this just, goes just to... Remind the, us, just remind us what yes, that is. The Gaitchens report was the report done by the uh, former head of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet who had been Scott Morrison's former Chief of Staff who investigated what had happened and who knew what, but we never actually saw the outcome of that inquiry. So uh, this is the problem that the coalition, uh, you know, we've never really found out exactly what happened and who knew what, uh, but without a doubt there is a, an email and a text trail which suggests that certainly some ministers' offices did. Let's go to policy before we run out of time. On the very important housing bill, the Greens and the government look like they're approaching an impasse. Um, is there any prospect, Laura, that this could become a trigger for a double dissolution? Well, anything can, Sarah. The question is, let's think about the politics of this. At this stage, uh, in the same way both Labor and the Greens think they've got a point here, um, it, no, it's, it's really perilous. Is the government going to go to an election saying, uh, you know, we're going to an election because we won't give enough money out to have enough social housing? I think that's a rather difficult proposition for them to make um, and to argue Senate obstructionism is also quite difficult because, you know, there's been a fair bit of co cooperation with the cost bench on a range of other issues. So, you know, anything's possible, but I'd just sort of argue that let's think about the politics of this from the government's perspective. Thank you, Laura. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks, Sarah.